All right, so I am now recording the bald eagle nestling, okay? And I actually heard him crying just now. Believe it or not. Uh, am I looking at the right spot here? All right, and there we go. Um, the clarity, yeah, the focus isn't so great right here. Yeah, I thought it would be a little bit better, even though it's, uh, it's not quite overcast, although the sun is just peeking into the clouds a little bit, so I could probably find one better spot where I could get a better view of this eagle right here. Yeah, I mean, even if I try to zoom in, it's not going to look that great. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Wow, look at that. That works. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can't, like, uh, I don't want to go too far out. So I'm taking a good guess that this bald eagle's hungry. Because if he's calling, then he's hungry. Yeah, that is beautiful right there. Hmm. So there was actually an event that I was going to go to later on today, but I decided not to. It was the Freedom Festival, um, which is at Mercer County Park. It's not at this park. But it's an event that only takes place during the summer of every year and they've got rides attractions they got local vendors that sell gifts and stuff like that clothing um, oh bald eagles uh, trying to get the parents attention Yeah, he's hungry. So there he is. So I figured I'd just show the whole eagle right there. Anyways, uh, it's really just the same event, the, the Freedom Festival. They just do the same thing every year. So there's really nothing like real great about it. But I just figured I'd bring that up since... Uh, it was something on my to-do list today in the event that there weren't any eagles here but um, there are well the chick is like perched just on a tree branch right outside the nest here and the parents aren't around I don't I didn't see them on the bare branches so they must be out hunting both both of them are hunting so it's most likely the mother that's going to come to the nest. And if the father hunts for anything, he'll give the, the meal to the mother and then on to the baby. Yeah, the focus is just... Like, I zoom in and it looks fine when I, when I go all the way in. Oh, crap. I'll see what happens when I... So I, I zoom in and then it gets all colorful, but it's too close. Sorry about that. All right, so now are we a little bit better? Is lighting good enough? I'd say so. Hmm. Yeah. You can really see him preening right now. So I'm kind of still, I have my like hand over the camera because I'm trying to like tilt this. 
Alright, so that's that's about as good as I'm gonna get. But when he raises his head up, it's gonna be tough. So one of the most trickiest things about filming is when you don't quite get the light lighting that you expect to get, it's just uh you just can't quite get the image that you want. Here comes a train. Train a coming. Yeah, so, yeah, this is always a problem for me. So it seems to be good when I'm positioned on the right, but when I go to the left, it's not so great, okay? jerky camera. So you know I'm quite far from this bald eagle. I mean, I mean you saw how far away I was from it. So this is about as good as you're gonna get. And the problem is now that there's a lack of sunlight, now it's really gonna be difficult. See, I, I can zoom in further. And for some reason, when I try to tilt this thing up, the whole thing, the whole thing comes loose. Like, I have to twist this whole thing so that, yeah, so you can see what kinds of struggles I go through just to record this, this bald eagle right here. Yeah, and when I tilt this up, it somehow goes to the left, which is like the weirdest thing. Yeah, and in order for me to really do well here, I need to tilt this up. See what happens here. All right, now we can zoom in on this thing. And it does it again. So it keeps tilting to the right. Now it's like not far enough, like... Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna... Okay, do I see the bald eagle? Is it still... Oh yeah, it's all the way down there now. I just wanna just get it just the right amount here. Oh, please, please work, please work, please go through. Yeah, see, a jerky camera is just not, this tripod is not so great. I don't really like it that much. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Crying, crying to his mother. He's crying to, you know, to the one who feeds him. So what happens is the mother just drops the food in the nest and then he eats it. She doesn't stick around. And then she hunts some more. Because usually they just catch real small meals. I mean, sometimes maybe she'll catch a big, a big one, and then what happens is after the eagle eats a whole lot, he falls asleep. Definitely a hungry eagle today.
that's as far as I can zoom in digitally. That's the farthest I can go. Um, I think that was a duck. I've got to go see what's going on. Alright, yeah, 45 seconds. Yeah, the recording automatically stops after 15 minutes, so... I'm just going to observe what happens here in this nest. But anyways, the sound came from the left, okay? Yes, the sound came from the left. But it's gone now. The duck's not making no sounds no more. All right, so here is the bald eagle again. The bald eagle nestling, that is. So it's not, the quality is really not too bad, at least right now anyways. There could be more sunlight if there was just a little bit more sunlight, then this would look perfect. And I've got the lighting set on maximum exposure, so that should help a little bit. But as you can see, the you know the eagle varies on the lighting. You can, you can kind of see his brown a little bit. His feathers are showing up. I could try to zoom in further. So if I z tilt this thing up, and I know it's going to happen as soon as I tilt it up, it's going to start jerking to the right. Okay, we're good. So yeah, so that's, that's as great as I can get. I mean... If I can tilt this down a little bit, maybe it'll be better. Yes, the main problem we have is the sunlight, the lack of sunlight. So once the sun like gets into the clouds, this is just a really cloudy image. So here's what I'm going to do. Real quick, all right. I'm going to go to a different angle. You're actually going to see me go into a different angle right now. So, if you give me just a second, I can zoom out, okay? All right, all right, zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, all the way. Oh, yeah. That's how far away I am from the nest, all right? So, I'm now going to walk to right here where there is a little opening okay right about here okay so there you go see the tree you can see everything right there and then I tilt this whole thing up this tripod and then we we go right in and still no bald eagle see I still can't see him at all man Like, I thought it would be really easy to, to find them through this. I guess it was harder than I thought. Okay, almost there. Yes, there we go. Now, we can start. I can fiddle with this other control thing.
All right, now I can zoom in. Yeah, unfortunately, that's as good as I can get it. I mean, I tried my best. So with only four minutes and 49 seconds left, I'm going to go check on the Bear Branch to see if one of the parents are there. there but you know what's interesting a lot of this creek has dried up so that means that I might actually be able to cross it somehow thus getting closer to the nest but then there's some very tall grass right after this creek right here So that is where it gets complicated. So even if I could cross the, uh, the creek, I have to find a good place to film. And there's also some bushes as well. And behind those bushes, I'm pretty sure there's a lake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the lake is right, right after where these bushes are. And there's not going to be a good place for me to stabilize my camera. This is the most stable place that I can think of. Right on this dirt trail right here. And no, the bald eagles are not on the bare branch, by the way. I, I checked. They're still out hunting. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like yesterday. I mean, sometimes the bald eagles are on the bare branch. Sometimes they're not. I mean, I'll have control over whether they're there or whether they're not. But I usually always find them there the day before it rains. Interestingly enough. And I had a feeling it was going to rain today and I was right. See, yes, interesting bald eagle right here. Just preening up in the nest. I think I'll get another recording out of this. I don't have work early tomorrow morning so I'll stay a little bit later than usual. 
I don't know if I'll record this all the way till sunset, but we'll see. Alright, eight more seconds and then we'll start the next recording here. Alright, the next recording is on. Yep. Got to tilt it up just a little bit to get the eagle's head. Well, hopefully that should be okay. So you can see I'm very particular on how I do my close-ups. Like when I want a close-up, I get a close-up. And that's the closest I can get. How sad. I so long to get closer. If I can just cross this creek, this creek right here, I'll only be like 800 feet from the nest. I mean, I don't know exactly how far I am from the nest. I mean, I could already be 800 feet away. And the bald eagle seems to be looking up. What you looking at, huh? What you looking at? Your parents aren't there. I know they're not on the bare branch. I know they're not. But it's just kind of weird how he's looking up. Oh, now he's kind of looking at me a little bit. I'm hearing some bird sounds. Probably just some birds fighting over territory, most likely. I hear, like, uh, what am I hearing? Well, robins and probably mockingbirds. I don't know. I don't hear any red winged blackbirds, though. Oh wait, that is red winged blackbird. That tiggy sound. Yeah. Red winged blackbirds are extremely territorial. In fact, the very first time I filmed the male bald eagle on the Bear Branch, he was being attacked by a red winged blackbird. The bald eagle stayed there the entire time. He didn't move an inch. Nor did he even care that the blackbird was even there. He didn't look at it at all. Now, he, he did actually look up at the blackbird as it was passing him for the first time. But that was only because the bald eagle was being territorial towards it. Yes, because of the fact that it is close to the nest. But then the bald eagle realized that the blackbird was being territorial towards the bald eagle. And then the bald eagle knew, you know, just didn't do anything, so that was that. Mm, can't figure out what he's looking at. Can't figure out what that bald eagle's looking at. It's always curious to know like why some birds look up for something rather than down because most of their field of you know what they're looking at you know to look for prey is all down like nothing's up eagles don't go up for prey they go down on them you know because because of their lifestyle you know they live near lakes you know they hunt for fish. A fish isn't going to leap like a hundred feet in the air. Okay. A fish is going to leap like a foot up right above the water. So when the bald eagle is looking for that fish, it's looking up from a very high distance. It's much easier 
to look down on something to, than to look up on something. So I find it quite strange that this bald eagle's looking up a lot. But maybe he's waiting for one of the parents to return to the bare branch. I'm sure he can see them from he from there. Eagle truly is a beauty. He really is. Let me just tilt up very, very slightly, okay? Yeah. That way, I can almost assure that I can get his full head right there. You can just really see the detail on the, f the feathers on his head. You can see some of them sticking out. Like it kind of looks like this bald eagle got all wet. And guess what? I am correct. Because it actually rained today. <laughs> so this bald eagle got a little bit of a shower. Yeah. Yeah, they need some of that. You know, um, it doesn't really rain too often around here. It doesn't rain as often as you think it does, or as often as you think it should, anyways. Alright, gonna be right back. Gonna check on the other place way quick to check on whether the mother or the father is on the bare branch. So I'll be right back. This gives me an option to get my exercise in. Thank <laughs> you. 